Uh, welcome. Good morning. I'm glad uh, you all can make it at 8 a.m. <laughs> um, I'm not a morning person, so I wouldn't have made it out here. So, uh, but yes, uh, we'll be doing the um, a talk on navigation APIs in Lightning. Um, so before we get started, <clears throat> just so you know, uh, before you make any purchasing decisions, make sure that they're based off of products and services that are currently available. Um, later on in this talk, I'll kind of go through some roadmap items. Uh, so just kind of be aware when I'm talking about roadmap items, um, I'm talking about things that are in the future and you know things might change. Uh, so I'm Andrew Huffman. Um, I work on the Lightning Navigation Services team. This is a team within uh, Lightning Platform. Um, and normally, uh, Akshatha, our product manager, would join us, um, but she was unable to make it today. Um, she usually helps me with the questions at the end, so um, if, if I don't know any answers, uh, we can certainly reach out to her afterwards. So a quick um, kind of overview of what this talk's gonna be about. Uh, first, we're gonna kind of go over what Lightning Navigation is. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll uh, kind of dive into some of the concepts, the page references, uh, the APIs, um, how you can use it, give some code examples, and then kind of tie it up with some roadmap <clears throat> items and tips and resources. Okay, so how does navigation work within Lightning? Um, as you are probably aware, Lightning is a single page app. That means that once you've um, loaded the page, all the navigation, subsequent navigations from one page to another page are done all entirely within the browser. Um, the server does not serve up pages anymore. We just retrieve data from it. And, oh, what did I hit? <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> the browser has to do all the work. Um, it needs to determine which components to show for a given page. Um, it needs to be able to track the history using the history API. Um, we also use it, uh, you know, we just store off uh, components that are already rendered and do a cache. Um, and so all this work, all this internal routing, this client-side routing, has required us to create a reliable framework uh, for this um, URL to uh, component resolution. And so as part of this, what we did is we created uh, a navigation service <clears throat> that allows you to navigate um, into any page and then send it around uh, these APIs from the navigation service on this concept called page references. <clears throat> now, if you're familiar from the Visual Force world, um, they also have a concept called page references. Understand that they're not exactly the same, so if you ever do any like Google searches for page references, make sure you put lightning page, page reference, and it'll help make sure you're getting the right results. So there's four main features um, that we provide through the Lightning Navigation APIs. Um, first, of course, is navigation. <clears throat> this is uh, resolving the component, just basically, basically di displaying the page for you um, for a given URL. Um, as well as uh, an ability to uh, manipulate the history stack. So if you want to do like a redirect, you can use the replace stack, um, replace uh, uh, query, um, Boolean into the API and it'll replace the history. And I'll show what that means here in a minute. Uh, you can use uh, it to generate URLs. Uh, this is actually probably a big one. Um, if you're like manually crafting URLs, really you can use a page reference instead and use that um, with the navigation service to actually generate your URL for you. If we ever want to change the URL structure, you don't have to worry about it because we won't, <clears throat> we'll not break the page references. Um, I will show some code examples like, you know, these are all supported in both Aura and LWC. They have the different um, <clears throat> methods for, for supporting that. Um, then we have page context binding. I think this is actually a more uh, powerful feature than, than really has been um, taken advantage of yet. So this is the ability for you to, uh, to have knowledge about the current page's state. So you get, um, normally if you wanted to like store your data in a query param, uh, you would have to parse the URL manually. Uh, by using um, page context binding, what you can do is you can actually get the a current page reference for the page, including the, the query params, in order to be able to like mutate the state of your components based on that state. Um, this allows you to also support that state uh, into the URL so that if you're, uh, if you want to like <clears throat> what we call deep linking, which is like book, you know, have a bookmark or something to a sp particular state of a page, you can use that. <clears throat> and you can also use it to carry state from one page to another. Uh, in my demos, I'll kind of show what that looks like. And the final feature that we provide is the ability to have URL adjustable components. Um, so you may have found uh, there's a, an event called navigate to component. Uh, that's being deprecated, um, but we still will support the ability for you to navigate directly to a component. What this means is that 
An admin doesn't have to set up a Lightning component tab or anything for that. Um, a developer can just, if they implement this interface um, in, with the org component, they'll be able to have that uh, component be something that you can directly uh, navigate to. Um, just note that we don't have uh, an LWC equivalent for this feature yet, um, but we'll, we recommend just using a wrapper, um, and we have a little code sample there for what that looks like. Okay, so starting um, about last year, uh, we, we made uh, public our navigation APIs. So we have um, a set of, but previously we had a set of events. Um, so if you want to go to the list page, you would fire navigate to list. If you want to go to a particular object, uh, you'd go to navigate to S object. If you wanted to go to related list, so on and so forth. And this obviously doesn't scale. Um, if we added a new page, we'd have to uh, create a new event. And so, you know, if we had 500 pages, we had 500 events. And so we wanted to uh, center this down into a single API. And so what we use is a Lightning Navigation. Um, this is a module you can bring in um, for, in both Aura and in uh, LWC. And it provides two methods, uh, generate URL and navigate. And both of those uh, methods will take in a uh, page reference and um, the, generate, uh, I'm sorry, the navigate one takes in an optional Boolean. <clears throat> So I kind of been talking a lot about page references. Uh, so I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So previously, um, there was um, if you were to want, if you wanted to go to a, a particular record page, you would fire a navigate to s object event, and you would provide a record ID um, as the param, and then you would fire. If you want to use the Lightning Navigation APIs, uh, what you'll do is instead you'll obtain the navigation service. And then you'll use this page reference. So you can see here, this object, this is a, a simple object literal. It has a type here, uh, this, in this case, the standard record page, and has two attributes, a record ID and action name. You can see that uh, action name is new. Um, we're actually gonna be kind of taking advantage of this uh, and adding more actions over time. Um, the public documentation shows which ones we have available right now. Um, this is something that we want to be able to, to kind of center a lot of our new APIs around particularly to be able to support things in LWC. And I think that's one thing I've got to mention. Uh, events like this, you can't fire from LWC. So uh, any event like force create record, for instance, uh, also you can't use within LWC. And so we're hoping to use navigation APIs to help support um, these other features. All right, so um, since a lot of this uh, centers around page references, I felt like I needed to do a deep dive into page references. Um, so it is a simple object. Um, it's just an object literal. It contains uh, three properties, uh, a type, attributes, and state. And you should note that um, what this does is it represents the URL. So it's a structured representation of the URL. Uh, what the type is, is it's an API name for that particular type of page. Um, so like a record page, an object page, for instance. Um, then we have attributes. These are required data that um, will be put in URL segments and used by the component to render itself. And finally, we have uh, state, uh, which is an optional object that you can provide that will um, allow you know, components to maybe mutate their, the way they look based off of um, you know, whatever user inputs. And that is stored as query params so you can support deep linking and bookmark ability in your components. So here's what this looks like. Here's a URL, and here's the page reference that represents that URL. Um, of course, at the beginning, we have a uh, domain, and then the lightning prefix. All lightning URLs uh, are prefixed with this lightning, uh, slash lightning. Um, and then this next segment here, slash O, that actually correlates with the uh, type, which is standard object page in this case. The next segment, account here, that actually correlates uh, to uh, object API name. And this next segment correlates with list. And then finally, the state here is uh, the query params. Uh, one thing uh, I want to mention on state, uh, if you are adding your own state, I, uh, you want to prefix things with uh, C underscore underscore um, or just some sort of namespace. This, is, this way, you don't uh, collide with other um, with other state params that might be being set by other uh, components or internal components. 
So we have quite a few page references. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll kind of briefly go over these. Uh, note that these are supported in Lightning Mobile and Desktop. Uh, Communities does have support for page references, but I don't know exactly how they've supported it. I think they have uh, some overlap, not entirely. It doesn't overlap entirely. Um, and I believe the documentations call out the differences. Um, uh, so Communities has uh, their own implementation that they're still using the same framework that we built. Um, that way we can kind of have some shared code between our two teams. Uh, so the first uh, page reference type we have here is uh, Lightning Component. <coughs> Lightning Component allows you to navigate directly to the component that I mentioned before. Um, so if you were to craft a page reference for this, you would uh, call it type standard component, and then you'd provide and its attributes the component name. And this is the actual API name of that component. Uh, next we have name pages. This is like chatter or home. Um, then we have nav navigation item pages. So if you create a Lightning Component tab, for instance, that would be uh, a, a navigation item page. And then this dev, dev name here would be um, the, the, dev, uh, the API name that you provided when you create that tab. Uh, and then we have object pages. This is like uh, your entity uh, tabs or uh, list views or their overrides. Uh, then we have record pages and re uh, record relationship pages. If you notice, both uh, the object page, record page, and record relations page, they all have actions. Um, again, just kind of keep your eye out for these. Th these will be, uh, we'll be adding more features for that in the future. And then um, uh, knowledge articles and web pages. And if you have any questions about these, um, I can try to answer them afterward. Okay, so uh, starting, um, I believe, in this last release, uh, you can now actually navigate directly to an app. This was a, a pretty uh, highly sought out feature by a lot of our customers. Um, so we created a new page reference type uh, called standard app. Um, what it takes as attributes are an app target and a page reference. What an app target is, is it's an either an app ID or it's a namespace uh, concatenated with a uh, developer name. Um, so if you wanted to, you can, you could, so for instance, an example of an app target might be standard underscore underscore uh, lightning cells. So provided the SQL query here, uh, this will allow you to obtain the information, uh, the Drupal ID, for instance, or the namespace prefix and the developer name. Uh, note that if it's a custom app, um, it'll, the namespace, namespace prefix will actually be uh, empty, um, but uh, for convention, we use the C underscore underscore uh, for that. So what this looks like in the URL um, is that the standard app uh, type will correlate to this first segment, slash app, and then the, uh, the app target here will correlate to the next segment. And then optionally, you don't have to provide this, but if you do provide a page reference, um, it actually gets encapsulated into this last portion here. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same. You'll notice in the documentation, I think we show this as like dot, 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 page ref. Just understand that that's what this means is that essentially the rest of the page reference gets tacked on to the end of the app. Um, I will uh, mention that when you navigate to a different app using this method, we actually remove this slash app slash standard, um, the app target from the URL when you do that navigation. Um, this was a product de a decision so that if you were to share links, you're not always sharing links in the context of a particular app. Um, but uh, you can use, still be able to use the feature um, as a developer. Okay, so I have this app that uh, I created a demo. Sorry. And let's see. Okay. okay, so this demo, um, I call it Mascots app. Um, I actually have an app here called Mascots. And um, it's pretty simple. <clears throat> I have this launch point. Uh, this is a Lightning Component tab that I created and put a, uh, a component on. Uh, we just have a Contacts tab. This is your standard Contacts list. And then I've created a, a new type of object called a Mascot. And in the, uh, in the Mascot is, if it loads. Hmm. Not sure what's going on. There it goes. <laughs> um, so uh, it has a, a mascot name, a biography, uh, and a contact that's associated with. And then also you have a picture ID, and that's how this uh, picture uh, displays. Not there yet. 
Um, so the first thing I'm going to go over is the navigation API. Uh, so with the navigation API, you can of course navigate. There's nothing too interesting about that. Um, but what we um, kind of like to highlight is the ability to do deep linking. So um, here's the page reference for a contact page. Um, and if I want to navigate specifically to a particular page like mascots, I can do that. So I can see I added the update the filter name here to mascots, and I hit uh, click on that, and you can see now that I'm on the contacts page. This is kind of what we call deep linking. Taking that a step further, we have uh, app deep linking. So um, I've updated this page reference to um, to be a app, standard app. Um, it's still in nested in here is the object page to go to um, a particular uh, mascot, um, but I'm sorry, a particular filter. And then, um, but it will do this within the Lightning Sales, uh, Lightning Sales app. So if I were to click on this, what you'll notice is it actually will refresh the page. And you can see that I'm now in sales. If I want to go back, I can actually just simply do that using slash app slash C underscore underscore mascots, because it's a, a, uh, an app that I created. I hit enter, and it switches me back into the mascots app. Um, additionally, the, uh, you should understand that um, links are handled a little bit differently for app URLs. So if I'm going to, uh, you can see, first of all, the, that slash app has been added to the URL. Um, but if I click on an app, uh, click on a, uh, an app context URL that goes to a different app, you'll notice it actually opens up in a new tab. Um, this was, an, again, a product decision so that, um, so that if you were to share a link within like Chatter, for instance, we're not going to be disrupting your workflow within that. So if you're like in a console and maybe on a call or something like that, you wouldn't be you know, reloading your whole page. Um, but if you do a program, programmatic navigation, that'll still occur within that tab. So if you want that feature, you can, you can do that just doing, using a programmatic navigation. Okay, so um, the last kind of bit to, to talk about with the navigation API is the ability to redirect. I'll just kind of show that real quick. Um, so if I want to uh, go see this Cody mascot, I uh, actually have it land intermediately on this tab, and then it redirects to uh, that card page. And then I'll hit the back button, you can see that I'm back on the launch point, not on the mascots tab, not on that intermediate tab that was used for the redirect. So if you ever have an issue where like, you hit the back button and then you end up getting redirected back to the page you just were on, that's because um, they didn't use like repl replace in the history stack. I'm going to go on the wrong page. Okay, so here's some code. Um, so this is the way that this looks. Um, when you want to use the navigation API in Aura, uh, what you'll do is you'll include the Lightning Navigation uh, component. You'll give it an Aura ID, um, and then you'll use that Aura ID to retrieve it later, and then you can call the navigate method on it and provide it a page reference. And then optionally, if you want, you can have a Boolean here um, for that second parameter uh, that is used for replacing the, the history. Uh, this is also available in any Lightning component. Um, for LWC, it's a little bit different. Instead, uh, what you'll do is you'll um, import navigation mixin from the Lightning navigation module. And then um, within your class definition, what you'll do is you'll actually extend this navigation mixin as parameterized over uh, the Lightning element. Um, and then you can use it this way. So what this is doing is it's actually mixing in methods into uh, your class. Um, but you'll notice the syntax is kind of weird. It's navigation mixin dot navigate. It, it's not like a string as you would normally expect or just a normal method call. Uh, this is because we're using symbols. Symbols are guaranteed to be unique. And so this allows us to, to provide these methods without them colliding with any particular method that you may have already written or that some other, some other mixin has written. Uh, aside from that, the, the, the way you use it is pretty much exactly the same. All right, so um, as I was kind of showing here, you can use the APIs to generate URLs. And of course, if I make any changes to the page reference, in this case here, you can see if I make changes to this page reference here, it updates that URL as well. Um, <clears throat> so one thing I kind of wanted to point out here is that when you're creating URLs, you want to make sure you're using uh, Lightning formatted URL. So if I click on this, 
um, what you'll see what happens is it navigates within the, within the tab. Um, however, if I were to go in here and I click and I use a raw anchor, uh, what you'll notice is that the whole app will actually rebootstrap. So if you notice that it, it, the entire app just kind of reloaded. That's because raw anchors go directly to the server. And there's nothing we can really do to prevent a, a, a raw anchor from just getting another request from the server. And so in order for us to handle things within, uh, within the uh, context of the client, what we have to do is we actually have to intercept those uh, clicks and handle them in a, in a way that uses the navigation service underneath the covers. Um, while also still you know, allowing you to do control click um, or you know, right click, copy, link address functionality. So we are able to handle both of those. Um, that's actually kind of one of the things that's nice about providing this uh, generate URL API is that it creates uh, user-friendly links. So by user-friendly, I'm talking about you know, right-clicking and saying opening up a new tab. Uh, the problem is a lot of people will end up creating uh, Lightning, uh, will create like a, a link, something that looks like a link, and then has an on-click handler that does, you know, fires an event or something like that. And if you right-click on those uh, links that just on, have on-click handlers and don't actually have a, a URL associated with it, you're just going to get JavaScript void or, or something like that when you try to open up a new tab. It's not a very good user experience. Um, so the way you use this is very similar to the way that you use the, um, uh, the, the Navigate API. Uh, again, you just bring in the Lightning Navigation uh, module and then give it an ID and then you'll find it, and then it's called generate URL on it. Uh, this actually returns a promise, uh, so you'll want to have a, a then callback that you then handle uh, the, the, the value to get back from that URL. And of, of course, you can have an error that happens here. Um, I think that would have, I'm not really sure how often that would happen, but if you did, uh, you want to have like some sort of default uh, URL that you would use instead, maybe just hash. Um, in LWC, again, it's very similar to how it was before uh, with the Navigate. Uh, you'll uh, import the navigation mix in. Um, and then in, um, generally what we recommend um, is that you generate the URL upon initialization in Aura. Um, since there's not initialization in LWC, instead it's connected callback, uh, you wanna have that in there. If you try to do this outside of the, the connected callback, for instance, if you have it like on a, uh, if you have like a, um, something that, you, that changes that might happen before it's connected to the callback and you have it react to that, it actually will fail on this call, so you wanna make sure you're connected um, before you use the navigation APIs. Okay, so the next one is um, page context and custom uh, components. Uh, so this is a way for you to be able to update your component using page state. Um, so the mascots tab here that I have um, allows you to uh, sort it. So right now it's just in some random order here. Uh, but if I click on uh, ascending, what happens is I, it actually reloads uh, or re-renders the component so that the values are now in ascending order. And you can see up here, what's actually happened is uh, updated uh, way up here. Uh, the URL to have this is in the state. So if I go to descending, for instance, it'll update up there. And then of course, you know, if I open, up, open this up in a new tab, it'll show up that you know, if I bookmark it, so on and so forth. You can imagine that there's um, you know, lots of things you might want to do with, uh, with this. You could add additional state into the page reference. Um, you can also use this to pass state along from one component to another. So if you notice here, um, if I want to say go to mascot to view Cody, and I click on mascots, what actually happens here is immediately it actually goes to this tab. You, you see it's in the query param, and then that, that information then gets passed on to this um, lightning component uh, directly, and it's in this, this page of its state so that the component knows how to render itself. So this is kind of an example, it's an arbitrary example, um, but it's a way for you to be able to, to take data from one component, one view, to another view, to another view. So you can imagine you make wizard flows um, using this kind of um, functionality. <clears throat> you can also do uh, bookmarkable state, as I mentioned before, and you're all adjustable points. And this is actually kind of what I uh, alluded to here. You can see um, it's slash CMP, 
slash C underscore underscore mascot card. Um, this is not like a lightning component tab or anything. This is actually strictly defined within the component itself. Um, so actually, let's see, in this, um, oh, it's just the card, isn't it? Uh, I have it implement this uh, is your addressable, um, and uh, the name of this component is mascot card, and that's what makes it something that you can navigate directly to. And I'll kind of give some simple code examples for that. Okay, so for obtaining um, page context um, in Aura, what you'll use is um, this interface called Lightning Has Page Reference. And what this does is it injects this page reference as an <coughs> attribute into your component. Um, you don't actually have to explicitly define it, but um, it will get defined for you. But just for reference here, you can see that it's um, set there. And then um, what we recommend you do, because it's actually possible for your component to, as I mentioned earlier, it can get cached. Uh, you want to have a change handler on that page reference, on that attribute, so that you can react to any changes. So, uh, for instance, like if you're updating your own state, uh, your component may not re-render, and so instead of you relying, you know, on always obtaining this during initialization, for instance, you will want to have this change handler um, do it to react to those changes, and then you can make whatever uh, changes that you want. Um, I wish I had more time. If I have more time, I'll try to go back and show you. Um, what that code looks like uh, in, in my actual demo. Um, one thing to note is that the page reference is frozen. This is because the frozen, it represents the current page, so if you want to be able to make any changes to that page reference, uh, you just need to do a shallow clone of it. You can just do object.parse, uh, object.stringify. It's something to keep in mind. Um, so uh, the, the way to do this in LWC is a little bit different. It's actually better. Um, I, what I kind of failed to mention on the Aura one is that it's only available to Lightning Component tabs and, and a few other scenarios where it's um, the, the page that owns it. In uh, LWC, instead, we use an at wire. So you'll bring in a wire from LWC, and then you'll bring in current page reference from Lightning Navigation. So we have this current page reference at wire. And this is actually very helpful because now you can put it anywhere um, on. Um, Anywhere within, within, you know, you're going to be in a flexi page or whatever, and you can obtain the current page's uh, page reference. Um, the way that you would want, you want to use it is, um, it's a little smaller than it. Uh, <laughs> you want to use an at wire with current page reference, and if you have the property, you just give it a name. Um, but if you want to have a function, uh, you can also do that. Uh, but we recommend that if you're using this in conjunction with the navigation mixing, so for instance, you're trying to generate a URL. Um, you need to make sure that it's, it happens upon connection. Uh, so we recommend you have something like a, you know, is connected uh, Boolean <clears throat> that's in your property so you can just track that. So for is your addressable, um, as I kind of showed you earlier, it, you can see the URL updates cmp uh, <clears throat> slash c underscore underscore and the, the API name for that component. And the way you do this is very similar. Um, in, in Aura, you would implement Lightning is your addressable. Uh, this actually extends has page reference, so it has all the features that are provided by has page reference, um, plus the ability to navigate to it directly using the URL. Um, so we again recommend that you use a change handler. Um, this, this is kind of important. Um, we are eventually going to get rid of navigate to component. Um, I, I'm not sure if anyone uses that um, here, but if you do, just be aware we are eventually going to get rid of it. Uh, it is deprecated. Uh, and we have some work that we want to do to, to get to make that happen. Um, but so if you're writing anything new, certainly use uh, the Lightning is your addressable uh, method. <clears throat> so as I mentioned earlier, LWC unfortunately does not um, give us an easy way to support the same uh, functionality yet. Um, but what, what you can do is you can create an OR wrapper. And so what you do is you just create that OR wrapper that has that same interface impl implemented. Um, you give it that same attribute, and then you pass that attribute down through a data binding to your LWC component. And then your LWC component can then react to that page reference changes, you know, um, and you, you'd want to have that as an API on that. Um, there is in the roadmap uh, the, uh, the goal of, of supporting this. Okay, so before we uh, t uh, finish up, I'm going to kind of go over some roadmap items. Um, so this is a big one, I think. Uh, at least uh, Akshata really uh, thinks it's a big one. Um, so uh, we are replacing force create record um, as well as the other record events uh, in the future uh, with page references. 
So if you're using Force Create Record, for instance, to launch into a new record flow, uh, that will be, um, they'll still be supported. Um, but it will be providing additional ways to do this using page references, and this is actually important because, again, as I mentioned earlier, you can't use those events um, in LWC. So we had to provide another way for using, uh, for launching into um, to the create record form. Um, so one of the big things um, with this is we are gonna be able to support default field values within page references. Um, so the way this looks like um, is that you will provide like an encoded string that's set to a uh, state and then uh, the component that, that renders the form will read from the state and, and populate it. So this actually will um, potentially persist that information to the URL if you wanna be able to like hot link out from outside in. Um, it also will enable the ability to use default field values with overrides, um, lightning component overrides. So um, uh, I believe this may have been supported for Visual Force pages, I'm not sure, but uh, for lightning component tab items, really have that ability. When you fire the event, uh, I think we all automatically default to using the standard view. So if you have a uh, you know, override for uh, new, um, you can actually update the same information. So you can create your own forms, uh, you don't have to use the standard uh, out of the box forms, and then you can just parse this, um, the state to, to uh, populate your. Uh, additionally, on our roadmap is uh, more record actions, um, so edit and clone record. Um, I'm, again, this is all roadmap, this is all future, but this is something that's gonna be happening, I think, over the next uh, year or so. Uh, additionally, a completion API, so this is a way for you to say, after I'm done saving, go here. Um, some of you may have found some internal APIs that do this. Um, there's some on-callback stuff that's in Force Create Record. Don't use that. Um, we want to eventually support this officially uh, using um, uh, completion APIs. And what that looks like is it'll be something that we'll store within the page reference as some sort of state that'll tell us where to go next. And, uh, and you can also use that to provide additional uh, meta information. Um, ability to support your all those components in LWC, as I've mentioned before. And then uh, custom link targets for console apps. So in console, if you wanna be able to create a link that just opens up in a sub tab or just opens up as like a workspace tab, uh, we'll provide that as a, as a, as a new target. Um, actually, I think the syntax might have changed to like lightning target, but um, we've actually kind of started this already with uh, knowledge articles. Uh, you'll notice that I think they have smart links in knowledge articles now. Um, so that's kind of the first step we're, we're taking in supporting this uh, functionality. Um, and convenience link components. So before, when like you wanted to generate a URL, you had to like on, upon initialization or connect a callback, you would generate a URL, and then and the, you know there's a lot of like kind of boilerplate there. Uh, I think we eventually want to provide that within um, some sort of utility function, uh, utility component that just does all that for you. And then we can imagine that that can get uh, com more complicated down the road with like record links um, is another thing that we've kind of talked about. Okay, so some takeaways and tips uh, before we get into questions. I would recommend you to stop using the navigation events. Uh, use the navigation APIs provided by Lightning Get Navigation. Um, and don't use navigation when you're generating links. Uh, use generate URL instead, uh, because otherwise your users won't be able to uh, right click or command click uh, and you know, uh, open things up a new tab. Uh, when you're using generate URL, use Lightning formatted URL. This is a very important one. Uh, you don't want users to re-bootstrap the app every time you know they click on a link. Um, so to prevent that, you want to use Lightning Format URL. Uh, implement um, has page reference in order to get the information from the URL. I really recommend, uh, highly recommend using this along with the page reference state. I think it's a very um, interesting feature that I hope that we can kind of expand on. Stop using the navigate to component uh, event. Implement Lightning is zero addressable instead. Um, support deep linking <clears throat> using uh, bookmarkable state, so you can take advantage of, of that page reference state and then be able to have your, your component react to um, you know, different query params that are in the URL. And then finally, uh, take advantage of app context deep linking. So um, if you have like 100 apps and like maybe most users only use five, you can create something that's on your home Flexi page that's just a little convenience component that you know, allows users to switch their app that way. Um, you can imagine there's other, there's other scenarios too that you might want to use for that. 
Uh, here's some resources. Um, I'll let you take a picture of that. I'm going to provide uh, uh, the slides after the talk um, at some point. So um, if you don't get or you don't want to have to type all that out, um, you can wait for the slides and then you can just click on the link. Um, but I do have the demo code up here. Um, I had set this up using SFDX. It's actually my first project using SFDX since us internal developers don't don't really use it uh, that often. Um, but it's actually it's actually really cool. Um, so I, I have some setup instructions on how to get that working. Um, but you can clone this. If you have any issues or questions, just reach out to me. Um, I'll be happy to help. And there might be some uh, steps I might be might need a cl uh, clarification on. All right, uh, questions? Yes, and take the take a picture of those emails, that's fine. <laughs> um, if you don't have questions right now, you can certainly ask afterward. And if there's anything I don't know the answer to, I will bug Exhafa. Loud though. Yeah, I'll just talk. Okay, it's fine. Um, thanks for your presentation today. I've been using the navigation uh, APIs for as long as I've been developing in Aura. And um, I have one component that does a lot of uh, re navigating based off of a custom URL parameter. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do is we default to global search when we can't find the record based off of like uh, a more user readable input. And that is not supported by yeah. any of the navigation, and so I have to rely mm -hmm. on a very hacky base64 encoding of the search mm -hmm. object. Yes. So yes. my ask is, if it's not already on the roadmap, please add global sure. search and the parameters to the I, roadmap for you know, finding navigation. I feel navigation. like I haven't heard too much about that, but I believe that that is something that we need to push on because that's something that's it. right yeah. now. It's yeah, uh, especially with the more generalized generalized navigation APIs because right. now it's not a new method; it's just a new like input, and there might be some additional um, aspects to it. Because I know that that's actually a fairly complex object, especially when you get to object scoping and things. Yeah. But um, I would definitely love a supported way of doing that, so I don't have to worry about every release breaking my custom component that a sure. lot of my users use. Yeah, I'll definitely bring that up with Sikshatha. Um If you haven't already, I would create also an. Idea idea exchange of, um, you know, idea so that that gets tracked through there as well. Um, but I think that that's actually a great idea. We definitely need to support that. I think it's not probably, like you said, it's not trivial, um, but maybe we can, um, we've made some inroads with that with default fit values or some other things that we can also use that might be able to support that. Cool. Thank you very much. Yep. Hi. So uh, my question is, um, is there a way to prevent the standard URLs on uh, communities? Because when we build communities, right, uh, we want to show only the custom pages that we have built for the users, but we don't want them to allow to navigate and use that uh, standard URL hacks. Oh, interesting. Uh, I, I don't know uh, too much about communities in general. I work on the Lightning, um, okay. for Lightning. Um, that's actually a good question that you, you could bring up with them. Um, I, I can also bring it all, also up with Ikshatha. Um, okay. I, 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 we don't even have that ability in, in regular Lightning. I think there's a, some things that we want to make to our framework to make that supported. Um, okay. Only. So that's probably down the road, if I'd imagine. Okay, because yeah. uh, recently what happened is uh, we have built in community, but there are some boards that they actually record the URLs and then they can reference and they can list. If the list is accessible, Somehow, then they can go and list access your old records from the community pages. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. that we just want to prevent them, or we want to have like on and off thing there. Yeah, to to turn that off, so they can yeah. do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we I can bring that up Thanks. with Ikshatha. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone anyone else have any other questions? Um, or if you don't, we can uh, we can also chat. Um, outside. Great. Thanks, thanks a lot, everyone.